All right, hi, this is Blaine Heisner. I'm, uh, we're working with the AUT 240 class today. This is a live job that was brought in here for us. Uh, this is a customer's car. It's a 2007 Chrysler Town & Country minivan. It's got a 3.8 liter engine and the customer brought it in for a concern of reduced power and slow acceleration. Uh, the customer has replaced the spark plugs, the spark plug wires, the manifold absolute pressure sensor, the EGR valve for a code, and a code P0300 multiple cylinder misfire. Uh, the concern seems to be present at uh, hard accelerations and uh, um, a lot of engine load. Uh, it, it seems to be running okay here at idle and it, it seems to rev pretty good, free revving and neutral. So we're just gonna take it on a little road test right now and we're gonna see what happens. Alright, we're going to do an acceleration. Run with full throttle. It's kind of cutting in and out. Uh, about half to three quarter throttle. And we're only about 26 mile an hour. 3500. If I back off the throttle, it's want to kick in and out. Check engine light now is on and flashing. And it's reduced power almost. Almost killed it. Now as I let off the throttle, it seems like it might want to go again. And now it's pulling a little bit, but at light, light throttle. So this car has a pretty substantial lack of power. And it just now shifted into uh, third gear. Let me go ahead and we'll pull back to the shop. I think we verified the customer's complaint. So we'll get back there and we'll uh, do some testing with it. Okay, we, uh, we verified the symptom. We brought it back in. We opened the hood and noticed something odd here. Uh, there appears to be a, a hole melted in the air cleaner. Now, I don't know if this is something due to a backfire or something that happened, but another student noticed that there was a piece of plastic laying, you know, somewhere in this neighborhood, and we pulled it out, and it says 65 watt, 120 volts. Well, there's nothing on this car that's 120 volts, so I don't know, but I'm expecting maybe someone laid a... Uh, uh, trouble light right here possibly I'm not quite sure but uh, we saw that and we just wanted to include that in the video just in case all right so after we got done with the test drive we uh, hooked it up to the scan tool uh, and pulled some codes we got a P P0128 which is a coolant temp code we got a P0404 which is an EGR flow um, and we also have a P300 which is a misfire now he did replace the EGR valve on it so we don't know if those codes were from when he, or before he pulled it or after a drive. Unfortunately, we didn't test it beforehand, um, but that's where we're at so far. So since we pulled a code for a coolant temperature, uh, we went to our PID, the data list section of our scan tool, and came up with a coolant temperature of 177. If you wanna zoom in right now, it's a little bit cooler, but it's been sitting for a little bit, and we say it's about normal. Okay, we decided from the symptoms that we had to put a vacuum gauge on our engine and watch it. Now, since the engine runs normally at idle, we would expect a normal vacuum reading at idle. Uh, you look on our gauge right here, we've got hooked to the booster tube in the intake, we've got 20 inches. Now, normally when we increase the RPM of the engine from idle to about 2,000, 2,500 RPM, our vacuum reading should improve due to the scavenging effect and the valve timing. Um, so we're going to try that and as we continue to accelerate the engine, if this exhaust is plugged up, what we should see is a, a continual decrease in the engine vacuum and who knows how low it'll get. So we'll, we're going to do this test. The engine's running right now. We're going to watch the vacuum gauge.
stinks too. I know you can't get that over the video, but it's uh, starting to smell a little bit bad. When we uh, now sitting here, you can see that this vacuum gauge is wanting to dip down. At an idle speed, this thing's wanting to, to kick back. And I'm thinking that the exhaust is backing up between the manifold and the catalytic converter here. When we open that throttle, probably, I don't know, 2,500, 3,000, maybe even 3,500 RPM, we drop that engine vacuum all the way down to nothing. Why? Because we couldn't get the exhaust out and we didn't have anywhere to put the new air. So it just stacked up in the engine, stacked up in the intake, and we saw a higher than normal amount of pressure in the intake manifold. We can't get air out of this car so we can't get any new air in. I think that's what we're gonna find. So we're gonna try to do some diagnostics and figure out if we can confirm that this uh, catalytic converter is stopped up. All right, so working on this minivan here, we believe it has a plugged yeah. exhaust system. So we uh, spaced out the exhaust to vent it to bypass the catalytic converter so that we can see if the catalytic converter is the problem. All right, Ryan, can you go ahead and start the vehicle, please? that they found there's many ways to do that you could pull the oxygen sensors we could actually remove the catalytic converter but the students found that there's a two uh, bolt flange right here and they just took the bolts out and put a screwdriver in to space that out now this is a, a crossover pipe so we got this you know the the, the um, this bank manifold and the rear bank manifold they're connected through this pipe so by opening it up there we we actually did we were able to vent both sides of the exhaust in that way so when we did vent the exhaust you saw on the on the last video clip that that uh, there was a noticeable change in the engine vacuum the engine vacuum stayed at or above 20 inches through the whole rpm cycle and you also noticed a change in the engine performance it did not bog down as it did earlier so just from the one test of opening that exhaust, we got a markable change in the vacuum reading and a, and a definite change in the engine performance. So now, as close as we can tell that this vehicle does have a restriction in the exhaust, so we're going to remove the catalytic converter, uh, we're going to inspect it, and then uh, most likely go ahead and replace that. So we're gonna go ahead and, and wrap this video up, and then we're gonna come back with everything that we do for video two.